Describing the background of the study will be our focus today. Stay tuned for more details. This is Dr. Lorna C. Velasquez. Before we start, kung bago ka pala sa aking YouTube channel, please don't forget to click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you will be notified as soon as I upload a new video. Since alam na po ninyo kung paano mag-formulate ng inyong mga research title kasi naituro ko na siya nung nakaraan, ngayon naman, tuturuan ko po kayo kung paano magsulat ng background of the study. But before that, let us first unlock what is background of the study. The background of the study is simply the overview of the research study. It explains why you as researchers are doing the study. Also, it provides information that is important or essential to understand the main body of the research investigation. Now, Paano nga ba ito isusulat? So, meron ako ditong sample kung paano isusulat ang background of the study. So, pwede nyo itong gawing guide para makagawa din kayo ng inyong background of the study. In writing your background of your study, please don't forget to revisit your topic. Remember that your chapters... 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, it must be vertically aligned with your topic. That's why, as you can see here, isinulat ko po yung halimbawa ng topic doon sa itaas. Why? It will be the basis of our statement in chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Actually, ito yung nagiging problema ng ibang writers or researchers. Kasi minsan, hindi sila consistent. Paiba-iba ang sinasabi. Minsan sa chapter 1, iba yung sinasabi. Chapter 2, iba na yung tinutukoy. Chapter 3, 4, and 5, iba na rin yung tinutukoy. Meaning, lumilihis sila doon sa topic. So, in here, isinulat ko siya sa top para laging maalala. Laging ito yung maging basihan ng ating mga gagawing background o anong mga statement na uh, ilalagay doon sa chapters 1 to 5 kasi dapat ito vertically aligned. Dapat nasa iisang direction lang tayo. Wherein, ang tinutukoy natin dito is blended learning in its effects on the academic performance of senior high school students. Ito lang po yung ating coverage. Hindi po tayo dapat lumabas dyan. Now, Para lubos na maintindihan kung ano nga ba ang tinatawag na background of the study at bakit nasa chapter 1. It is because background of the study is part of the introduction. Introduction is part of chapter 1. Chapter 1 is the first part of a research study. Sa chapter 1, it is being described as the problem and its background. So, malinaw dito na ang description ng chapter 1 ay tumutukoy sa problema at sa background ng ating topic. Now, sa paggawa ng ating background of the study, uh, pwede natin itong isulat lang sa limang paragraphs. Hindi naman kailangan napakahaba. Okay na yung limang paragraphs. Okay. So, paano ngayon siya isusulat? Kailangan natin i-consider yung inverted pyramid. Ano ba yung tinatawag na inverted pyramid? So, kung na-imagine niyo yung pyramid, baliktad siya. 
So, from deductive to inductive. Mula sa malaki o general to specific. Okay, pangkalahatan hanggang sa naging more specific po tayo. So, yun yung tinatawag na deductive to inductive. Okay? Now, going back to the problem, we need to remember that our focus is on blended learning. Now, in paragraph number one, we need to look for the problems or to identify or determine the problems related to blended learning. So, ano yung gagawin natin? Kasi sabi kanina, deductive, di ba? From, from general to specific. Pwede natin pagtuunan pansin yung problema na may relasyon sa blended learning sa ibang bansa. So, from abroad or countries abroad, pwede natin i-focus doon sa pangkalahatan na yon. And then, punta tayo sa Philippines, sa loob ng bansa natin. Ano yung mga problema na may kinalaman sa blended learning? So, yun na yun ah. Abroad, Philippines. Paano magiging specific? Kasi kung baga sa Philippines, malawak din. Ang daming mga, bans ah, ang daming mga uh, regions, di ba? So, magiging specific tayo. Pupunta tayo sa eskwelahan. Okay. So, abroad, Philippines, school. So, naging specific tayo. Kasi pang malawakan, lumiit sa Philippines, tapos naging particular tayo doon sa school kung saan tayo nag-aaral o saan tayo konektado. ba? So, yung first paragraph dito, dito sa aking template, pwede natin ilagay yung mga problema na may relasyon sa blended learning sa abroad. So, yung first paragraph, pwede abroad. Second paragraph, yung mga problema na meron sa Philippines related doon sa blended learning. And then, yung third paragraph, pwede po natin isulat dyan yung mga problema naman na nararanasan ng mga senior high school students sa eskwelahan na kung saan sila nag-aaral. So, meron na tayong tatlong paragraphs. ba May tatlong paragraphs na tayo. So, pwede rin natin tingnan dito sa first, second, and third paragraph yung gap. Ano ba yung gap? Research gap. So, dito natin makikita kung ano yung problema na meron sa abroad How about in the Philippines in in our school ano yung gap nila okay so ibig sabihin ba parehas ba yung naranasan ng ng mga estudyante sa sa abroad sa Pilipinas at saka sa eskwelahan kung merong gap ano yung gap doon because it will serve as the basis in formulating our questions Okay? Kasi titingnan natin yung tinatawag na developments. Meron bang developments? Meron bang pagbabago? O walang pagbabago mula noong unang panahon hanggang ngayon? O simula noong nagkaroon ng uh, pandemic hanggang ngayon? Wala bang pagbabago? The same pa rin ba? So, doon natin makikita yung gap. Okay? So, meron na tayong tatlong pangungusap. Okay? So, tandaan po yun hindi kailangan sobrang haba. Okay na po yan. So, ulit, blend, problema tungkol sa blended learning sa abroad, problema tungkol sa blended learning sa Philippines, and, yung pangatlo, problema naman, related to blended learning, in our school, where we are connected. So, malinaw po yan. Okay po? Now, let's go to the next paragraph which is the fourth paragraph you already identified the problems related to blended learning abroad in the philippines and in the school where you are connected in paragraph number four you are going to enumerate the effects blended learning to the academic performance of senior high school students. Diba? Na-identify na natin yung mga problema sa abroad, problema sa Philippines, problema sa school, eskwelahan, yung mga senior, school, senior high school students na may relasyon doon sa blended learning. Ngayon, ano yung mga effect 
ko ng mga problema yun doon sa academic performance ng estudyante, lalo na yung mga nasa super high school. So you are going to state or to introduce the effects of those problems. Okay, ano, dahil doon sa mga problema yun, ano nga yun ang epekto nun sa academic performance ng bata? Specifically, the senior high school students. So, yun yung pinalagay natin dito sa uh, paragraph number 4. Okay? Because it's not enough for us to know the problems. We need to also know the effects of those blended learning into the academic performance. Okay? So, malinaw na nasa paragraph number 4. Now, meron na tayong problema. Alam na natin kung ano yung epekto doon sa academic performance ng senior high school students. And because of the problems, because of the effects, as a researcher, what is your rationally reason or reasons and objectives in conducting this particular study? Kasi hindi enough, hindi sapat na malaman lang kung ano yung problema sa abroad, problema sa Philippines, problema sa Sunan. At hindi rin sapat na alam natin yung epekto ng blended learning sa academic performance nila. As researcher, what we can do to help solve the problem? Okay? Ano ang pwede natin may ilong? So, in this part, I am referring to the last paragraph, which is the last part of your introduction. You need to state your rationale. Kailangan mahinaw, klarado. And this is the most important. You need to convince your audience, your readers, and most specifically, the panel of examiners because during defense ito yung kadalasan hindi nasasagot ng mga researchers or writers natin. Kailangan may paliwanag ninyo ng maliwanag kung ano yung inyong mga reasons or rationality kung bakit kayo nagkakanda ng ganitong mga pag-aaral. Ano yung objectives ninyo as a researcher? Kasi Sabi ko nga kanina, hindi sapat na malaman lang yung problema. Hindi sapat na alam mo yung effect ng problema yun sa estudyante, lalo na sa senior high school. Kailangan meron kang magawa bilang researcher. So, the rationality must be convincing on the part of the audience, readers, and as well as panel of examiners. So, you need to think of that. Kailangan makumbinsi mo sila. Okay? Remember that. Now, we're done with the uh, introduction in the background of the study. Diba? We're done. Diba? Now, before I end this lecture, I want to emphasize that in chapter 1, there are things or practices that you need to avoid. Kasi karamihan ng ating mga researchers kanya ay kumukopia online. So, please refrain from copying and pasting text from the internet. Please try to formulate your own statement or paragraphs. No worry about the grammatical errors or lapses because it can be easily corrected. Remember that we have plenty of online applications that we can use specifically the Grammarly. Diba? Ang dami tayong mga free online checkers na pwede natin magamit sa pag-correct na ating mga grammatical lapses or errors. So, huwag kayong matakot na magkamali because it is part of the process. Okay lang yan. Okay lang yan. So, huwag lang kayong matiplagiarize because if you 
are going to copy and paste text from the internet. Hindi malayo na magawa kayo na tinatawag na plagiarism. And plagiarism is a crime. So, please remember that you need to consider ethical considerations in conducting or in writing our research study. Okay? So, proper citation is needed. And remember, in chapter 1, as much as possible, please make sure that your chapter 1 will not look like review of related literature. Kasi most of the time, pag tinignan na yung chapter 1, nagbubukha siya ng review of related literature. Kasi ang dami mga citations from the top to the end. Ang dami. So, walang pinagkaiba sa related literature in chapter 2. Refrain. So, most of the time, ganun ang nakikita natin sa mga person person. Okay, so, medyo uh, irritating on part of the uh, readers, diba? So, pwede naman kayo maglagay, pero huwag dun sa first page. Pwede siya maglagay sa second page, third page, at saka maglagay kayo minimal na pwede isa o kaya dalawa. Huwag yung tataas pa kasi nga nagmumukha siya ng related literature agad. Okay? So, huwag po yung ganun ng practice. And going back to the citation, in the academic community, Specifically, in writing this research paper, you should properly cite the sources or the authors. Please make sure na nandun siya sa bibliography and please follow this APA format citation. APA stands for American Psychological Association. So, we are going to follow that uh, format terms of citing your sources. Okay, so we also have one, two, three authors in the like. So, iba yung proseso ng pag-sasite natin ng mga authors. Okay? So, please make sure that your work is original because at the end, before you will defend your paper, of course, you will run your paper napakahirap kung uh, you are about to defend your paper tapos pala puro plagiarize so pababaan mo yung similarities o yung plagiarism so ang hirap kasi babalik ka sa uh, sa start di ba so mahirap yung baka na pinatay din lang di ba so you need to referring to pagkabihin and pasting and uh, online resources are not good sources for not all of them, okay? So, better to use books, journals, magazines, and then those of dissertations, and also of theses, and other published or unpublished books, and always sign up source, in respect of those authors or uh, writers, okay? So, that will be my uh, sharing for today. So, it's all about introduction, the background of the study, which is part of chapter 1. Of course, we're, uh, we're not yet done with chapter 1. So, uh, it will be continued. Alright? So that will be all for today. I hope that you learned a thing or two from my lecture. See you again on my next research episode. Again, this is Dr. Lorna C. Velasquez sharing you this quote from Eugene Bell Jr. Aspire to inspire before you expire. Bye for now. God bless everyone.